Hello everybody, I am Almond Bragg and today I'll be talking about my project. So I use machine learning to predict NBA basketball game outcomes. So first just an overview of what I'll be talking about today. Um, I'll be going through my introduction slash motivation for the project, the data preparation I did, the algorithm, algorithm and model selection, and the final model performance estimates along with the conclusion. So now on to the introduction and motivation. Um, the first thing, um, just the NBA really is just such a large business making billions and billions of dollars every year, along with the sports betting that goes into the NBA, making more, more, more money as well, making billions and billions of dollars on that. Um, this really was one motivation for the project, but the main motivation was just um, my love for the game of basketball and this project allowing me to merge both basketball and machine learning together to create just a very cool project that I could be very happy with. Um, another thing is really sports analytics in general allows you to test a lot of different models um, that you can use in many different fields, um, not just in sports analytics. Um, and the overall goal of this model is to create a predictor that can create win versus loss um, in the NBA games. So for data preparation, I looked at two data sets um, for this. Um, the first data set I obtained from Kaggle, it was about 15,000 rows and 123 columns. Um, this data set really was a lot of unneeded data. Um, it, was, it was really just mainly used to obtain um, the matchups from specific games, the date of the games, and then the outcome of the games. The rest of the data was um, um, data from the in-game statistics, which really can't be used to help predict a game since it was what happened during the game. Um, so for the second data set that I got, I also obtained from Kaggle, and it was about 30,000 rows and 39 columns. So this was the more useful of the two data sets and what I, what I really used um, to get my features. So this was a data set comprised of the standings from every day of the NBA season from 2012 to 2018. Um, it contained where spe specific teams ranked how many games they had won versus loss, either overall or just at home or just away, along with how many points on average they scored versus how many points they gave up, um, along also like with their current winning versus losing streak. So all of these um, came in handy as, as different features. So for um, the combined data set, it was about 7,000 rows and 20 columns. So how I combined these, was by taking the team abbreviation along with the game date and merging the two data sets together. And then this allowed me to have the, the whole data set, both data sets together. And then from there, I just took the relevant statistics from the second data set to apply to that specific game. Um, I took the categorical variables such as the team location, home versus away, and changed that to numeric zero or one so zero for away one for home and then win versus loss or team result which would end up being my class label i changed that to to a numeric of zero zero for a loss one for a win another thing i changed all the records to a percentage so home away in total i changed um, them all to percentages of how many game like the percentage of games they won um next for the team and opponents they i made sure that they all had the same features so they all had their, their current streaks, their current rank, their current point differential going into that game. So overall, this data had 19 different feature variables and one class label, which was team results, win versus loss, zero or one. And then all the statistics were what the team had achieved coming into the game. The training set that I created was um, from the 2012 to 2016-17 season. Um, and then I wanted to test it on the most recent season, which was the 2017 to 2018 season. For algorithm and model selection, I uh, used a nested cross validation to compare four different algorithms. For the inner loop, I used a stratified K fold of two, and for the outer loop, a stratified K fold of five. Um, and then I looked at four different um, algorithms K nearest neighbors, decision tree, random forest, and gradient boosting. So for K-nearest neighbors, I implemented it using uh, the psychic learn. I used the ball and tree method and standard scaling for it. 
and then the parameter search I had was for um, the number of neighbors, one through 10, and then 15 and 20, and then the distances Manhattan and Euclidean. And then from this, I got an outer cost validation accuracy of 60.1%, plus or minus 0.87%. For the decision tree classifier, um, I used this, I used um, the psychic learn to implement this as well. On um, the parameter search of this for max that I searched for max depth um, one through five, 10, 15, 20, and none. And then for the uh, cri criteria I used was the guinean and entropy. And then from this, I got an outer cross validation accuracy of 57.04 um, plus or minus 1.07. Um, then I used the random forest classifier um, I implemented this again through psychic learn um, and the parameter I used for this was just number of estimators 10, 100, 500, 1000 and 10,000. And from this, I got an outer cross validation accuracy of 64.7% plus or minus 0.92. And then the last one I used was a gradient boosting classifier. Um, and I again implemented this using psychic learn. The parameters I used were learning rate 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 1, number of estimators 10, 100, 500, 1,000, 10,000, and max depth of 1 through 10. The outer confidence, the outer cost validation accuracy I got from this was 65.76% plus or minus 1.5. So for algorithm selection, looking at these, um, I would I took the gradient boosting because it had the best um, cost validation accuracy. Even though the variance was a little bit high, I still thought this was the best algorithm to go with. So from this, I um, looked at the hyper hyperparameters. So to select for the hyperparameters, I used a grid search cross validation. Um, doing this, I looked for the parameters of learning rate, number of estimators, and max depth. From this, I got the best cross validation accuracy to be 66.09%. And then the best parameters were a learning rate of 0.1 on the number of estimators at 10 and the max depth of two. So for the per performance estimate of this model, I ran an out of bag bootstrap with 200 splits. And from this, I got a mean accuracy of 65.84% and a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval of 64.12 to 67.65. And then after I did this, I wanted to evaluate it on the test set, which again was the most recent season of the 2017 to 2018 season. I got a test accuracy here of 65.89% with a 95% um, confidence interval of 63 to 69. Overall, it performed, it performed pretty well. The only thing I would say is the variance was a little high on the um, test set, but again, this is mainly due to the fact that my data set is not super, super large. Overall, I think the model did perform pretty well at around 65% accuracy through all the tests. Um, this was really what I was shooting for, so I'm, I was pretty happy with this. Um, further investigation, I really would look to add maybe more variables for like in-game statistics, like um, per game rebounds, per game assists, per game steals, average pace, stuff like that coming into the games to help predict. Um, also creating a model that would choose whether to take the over under of the gambling spread I think would be really cool. Um, this could be really useful because these spreads are pretty tough to predict. And then lastly, looking just at which statistics are like really most important, uh, most important in um, increasing win percentage, just so teams could like look at that and uh, analyze the data and decide how they want to go about improving their team. That is all I have. Thank you guys for listening. This project was really fun. I'm, I'm glad that I could do it. Thank you.